This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. And this is For The Players, the pop culturist PlayStation podcast. There were 40 years of playing PlayStation and 8 plus years in that games media combined. We thought we'd throw a hat into the ring and join that PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 9am Australian Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and 8am on iTunes and the other podcast services. If you want to be a part of future conversations, join us on Facebook, Discord, comment below. If you're feeling generous, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash popculturists. Head over there, check out the tears. There might be something there that interests you. Now, if you do want to watch us record this live on a Saturday morning, you can be a patron. I bugged myself up there. If you're a patron, you can watch this live as we record it every Saturday morning and a bunch of other nice little perks in there. Actually, that's really all about it. But we are on Twitch at twitch.tv slash thepopcultures where you can subscribe and like and biddies and all those streamery things. And of course, merch, this one, that one. There's one on this. Popcultures.com slash shop things oh man i really like that like i really broke my momentum so early and it just crumbled the rest hey you you've only done it 72 times yeah minimum minimum at least mm. <clears throat> yeah right yeah, yeah finished three games this week holy come on that's good so good. three credits what's that what's I'm, I'm, total I'm, this I'm year i'm rocking up on uh i'm, I'm sta- sticking to my pledge that i made <laughs> last week mm. well, how many is it this year yeah Nine, yeah, very good, Went dude. Six to nine. I did like that. Yeah, last week you were like, "Well, I'm not going to play any more games until I finish these four games." Hey, I finished three of the four games. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing Octopath because it's just a bit too much. It's, yeah, you've given up too, on that one. It's just too long. Not doing Hollow Knight because <coughs> it's just too hard. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but what did you kick off then? I uh, finished Doom. Hmm? It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Got a bit repetitive towards the end. It's just, you know, you walk in, do a thing, walk into a big open room and you're like, here it comes, Bleh! kill all them, go to the next room, next room, corridor, oh, it's a big room, here it comes, Bleh! Bleh! <laughs> you know, uh, the story's cool though, I did call the ending pretty far away though, I'm like, this dude's so, gonna fuck me over. So Anything. last time that we spoke about Doom, you said, I'm taking on this woman, how much longer did you have after that? Oh, that was only chapter four. Oh, so you're like really early on. Because you go to hell like fucking... 17 times oh. it's, you go to hell to do a thing and then you get pulled back he's like oh nope you gotta go back and you forgot the thing okay I'll go back and do that then you come back he's like wait once more go to hell it's like okay yeah and then you know you find that's, your the, ro- that's the robo leader man yeah yeah Samuel Hayden yeah I'm like he's gonna fuck us around at the end he did sort of coming uh, I will never <laughs> ever play another <coughs> FPS on the Switch yep <laughs> Decision made? Done. Decision made. Because the Joy-Con is just a fucking shit. And why did you dock it? Huh? Why did you dock it? It's still the Joy-Con. It doesn't change anything. Oh, you don't have a Pro Controller, do you? No. Mm. I'm not not buying it. Yeah, fuck that noise. What the fuck do I want a Pro Controller for? (laughs) I don't play my Switch docked. My dock is in my bed next to my bed now. Yeah, it just charges. Because it's just never on the TV anymore. Um, So yeah, Doom was cool. It was was fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed my time with it. All my frustrations came from playing with Joy-Cons, pretty much. Uh, I feel like it would have been a better experience with the Chook Shop. So that's noted for Eternal. Mm. I finished SteamWorld Dig 2 on the Switch. Now, is, is, is SteamWorld Dig that... Okay, no, I'm thinking of Splunky. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not this one's not it's procedurally... Not, it's not yeah, okay. Yeah. No. Uh, it, it is... You mine. You find crystals. There's a story. You go to new areas. You get, like, grappling hooks and mm-hmm. bombs. and yeah, it's fun. You said this would be a very big bet, a very good bets in the game. Yeah, I think it would. Yeah. It only took me four hours to finish it. Oh, but I, I could have gotten a lot more time out of it, but I was like, no, I'm going to finish the game. So I'm just going to finish the game. Um, yeah, about four hours. It's 30 bucks, though, which was, I was like, oh, I don't know. But I spent 30 bucks, so I had to finish it. Yeah. I had to finish yeah. it. it. It was good. It's good. And then I finished Metro 2033. That was fantastic. Yeah. That is a franchise worth jumping on. Well, I did buy it under your recommendation, mm. um, and I, had, I haven't jumped into it yet. You need to be in a very particular setting <coughs> to play it though you mm. can't have a podcast going you can't have James zipping around the lounge room it's not that kind of game is it one that I'd probably want to sit in here have a yeah have it's TV not, not like you don't have to play it in the dark or you know to get spooks and stuff but you, it, it really does lend itself to giving it your 
attention yeah. without being distracted by anything else. You know, with James Eden <coughs> Plato over oh no, 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 I'll do that in a sec. You know, it's not. So, James Eden Plato without me, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but I started Last Light. Mm, that's the second one, yeah? The second one. Uh, I'm going to step back from that for a while. Too just, much spooks? No, or just, is it too much the same? Yeah, I mean, I, d- I just finished it and then I booted up the sequel. I'm like, oh, I'm going to take it. I'll play some other things. So I did buy Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition on the Switch. Oh, yeah. As a reward for finishing those three games. Very cool. Yeah. It's cool. I like it. Yeah. It's, so it, it's weird <clears throat> because they kept the original music, the all the voice, all the, they've taken all the voice actor work from the actual game. But then having it overlaid with this chibi art style. Yeah, the small is, little big head yeah, dudes. Yeah, it's a little weird because it is a pretty serious story. And it does hit the story beats a lot quicker because there's no. You know, it's not open world. Mm. Whereas, you know, there are little side paths and all that you can take. But it is very, I guess, mobile friendly because it is a mobile game. Mm. But it just it gets you through the story. Like, fuck all the rest of it. A couple side missions and all that. But it is just, if you want to know what happened in this game, this is how you do it. And it was 40% off. So. Very good. But it is weird because they're having very serious dialogue, but they've got this like this big like bowl head <laughs> like, fluffing around. Uh, but I am enjoying it. It, it is, it's good. Awesome. I don't know how long it'll take because that's a well, long Well, if, if it cuts game. out a lot of the open world, like I'm not quite sure what yeah. how, what that would mean. It I must, reckon it'll be at least probably 30 hours. Does it have all the extra DLC and stuff? I don't know. Mm. Uh, Paul in the chat, one of our Patreon supporters, has mentioned that the camera is frozen. This is what you get to pay for. That's right. You, you get to pay for, ca- for frozen cameras, but that audio is still fucking sweet though. Uh, 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 yeah, I had a good, I had a good gaming week. And Paul does always jumps and said, "Steam World Dig the sequel and Heist are the best. Try them, Ryan. There you go. Maybe I have to now. They are Ryan <coughs> games. Oh my knee. <laughs> uh, I've had a pretty low key week actually. Like I've work's been pretty um mind demanding. Mm. So I've kind of come home and it's like, Ugh. so I streamed uh the first two and a bit hours of Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Wednesday. Um. Still don't give two fucks about story. Gameplay's tight. Um, to, uh, Lara's a dick. Uh, like the the whole premise of the of the epi- of this episode uh, of this um, game seems to rely on the idea that she went to a cave and went. Oh, I probably shouldn't take that. Yeah, and then like you brought the apocalypse, and the apocalypse literally happens. Huh. So she's like, well, and she's like, what have I done? Like, yeah, what have you done? Fair. Yeah. And like she's still the same sort of like Cause it wasn't <clears> in like the first one, at least the first one, she was kind of a sympathetic character. Yeah, there's a lot of weakness she's to her. She's like in the out first. of out of out of her element, out of her depth, you know, just trying to survive. Yeah, yeah she's trying to survive and you when she kills someone, she's like, Oh my god. Yeah. And in this I like, kill two Jaguars and she's like That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like She's got like Nathan Drake syndrome. Just <laughs> fucking blowing away a mm, hundred people. A little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> like and she's tracing, chasing the Trinity people, which I think were that they were a big component in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Didn't care for them. Don't care for them now. Um, Jonah, who's her little side buddy, <clears throat> her friend zone dude, mm. he's there and he's almost in every game. And he's like, oh, what do you need, Lara? I'll do whatever you need. Please love me, Lara. Mm. Um, she treats him like shit. Yeah. But he's the voice of reason in this. I, really- I heard on another podcast that, like you are together and then you split up and you go through all this shit to get out the other end and he's just at the other end yeah yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah literally. Like, listen, at the op- how did you get here yeah. at the opening when you bring on the apocalypse this giant flood happens and you're being thrown around this yeah. this river through a town like no you nearly drown and get stabbed and you get to the end he's like hey like <laughs> How did you get here, Jonah? I think that's a running thing through the game. Yeah. I've heard. <laughs> but like, yeah, Jonah and the voice of reason. She's like, we've got to do this. We'll do this. And he's like, the world doesn't revolve around you, Lara. I'm like, fuck yeah, Jonah. <laughs> you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I got really connected to, um, I really got connected to Jonah in that, in that one moment. I'm like, nah, you're cool. Like in the other ones, I didn't give two shits about him at all. But now that he's calling her out on his but shit. But now that he's calling her out on his shit, I'm like, this is my man. My man, Jonah. I will spend some more time with it. Oh, I do want to finish it. Um, it is. It should be a somewhat easy credits as well because it's pretty straightforward and, mm. and it's obviously that. And it's, got, it's got the same sort of uh, open worlds that Rise had, uh, but they're a lot more dense now. So like when you're in a jungle, there's no like open like it's fucking jungle. 
That's cool. Which is really cool. Like, it, 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 you can see they've jacked it up. Now, it does look substantially better than Rise. Mm. <clears throat> because Rise, what, three years ago now on the Xbox One, and then they up it to the PS4. <clears throat> so with the Xbox One being comparative to the PS4, it is the less powerful console. Mm. Like, you can only max out like 900p at, at the time. Mm. Um, so now they've got the full capabilities of the One X and the Pro. Like, they can just jack that shit. And it looks schmick. Like, lip sync for me is always, the, as we talked about before, the thing that throws me out. Spot on in this game. Like, it's really, really good. Cool. Um, yeah, and other than that, I've, yeah, I've just been using uh, Everybody's Golf as my chill at the end really? of the night. I'm just kind of like, ugh. I, you know, it's where I can kind of listen to a podcast, literally glaze my eyes over it. And that's what, and then I, I pay for that for like half an hour and then I go to bed. Oh, that's Rocket League for me. Yeah. <clears throat> it's good. I, I, I do enjoy everybody's golf like a lot. And at work, I've played a ton of games. But Did you get the VR one? No. Did we read it on the I haven't week? grabbed it yet. Mm. I didn't see it on the store. Yeah, I've had a ton of lip sync issues, says Paul. Oh. Well, so far, in the very minute time I've spent with it, it's been pretty good. But I was doing it on a stream and I was shit talking the whole time, so I may have missed all of it. <clears throat> but anyways, that's what we've been playing. So now we're heading to the news. Where we tell you about what PlayStation stuff happened this week in a section we call Inform the Players. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's quality news this week. Just had a, had a bit of a yawn there. <laughs> this first one's pretty yawn worthy, I think. Mm. To me, anyway. Sony has announced the PlayStation Classic, which comes with 20 preloaded games and will be released December 3rd at a retail price of 100 bucks US or $150 Australian. Sony's very own mini retro console will come with <coughs> Final Fantasy VII, Tekken 3, Wild Arms, Jumping Flash, Ridge Racer 4, and other legendary, quote, titles, which will be announced before the year's end, all in their original format. The PlayStation Classic is approximately 45% smaller than the original PlayStation, and Sony has emulated the original packaging as much as possible. Each unit will come with a HDMI and USB cable, two original pre-DualShock controllers, though you will have to buy a compatible USB-AC adapter because it's not included, even at $150. Mm. I said this in our Discord chat. The fact that there's no analog sticks mm. means there's no ape escape, which means this can <laughs> fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is going to sell hotcakes mm. because I think that these mini consoles are becoming like a collectible thing at, at this point. Yeah. but And like that's the key reason I want one. I haven't pre-ordered one yet because mm. I, I had that hype moment and I was like, <gasps> and then I gave myself a day and then I went, Mm. I still want it, but no. I'm I, d- I feel like the fact that they didn't release the full list of games yet indicates mm. that what the five they have shown is probably the, maybe the best they've got to offer and everything else might be a bit meh. I can't, I'm going the other way. I think that there's enough here to really bring you in. Like Final Fantasy VII and Tekken Three are good opening and Ridge Racer Type 4 is pretty dope too. <clears throat> I, I don't know the other two games, to be honest. Yeah, I couldn't tell you about Wild Arms Jumping Flash. Couldn't tell you. Um... So, like, Tekken 3 is a big pull for me personally and for most people. So, like, ooh. Okay. But then, because they're not dropping it in the one big go, they can tease it out for the rest of the year. Because last I checked, EB Games still has pre-orders open. Mm. Which means... Oh, I, don't, I don't think they'll mm. run into the issues Nintendo have with their mm. uh, availability. Well, I mean that in the... T- I mean that in the... I, w- I was concerned they would have the same availability issues, but maybe people are hesitant, maybe people are sitting back and waiting... Mm. Um, which is great because like I, there are there are a bunch of other games I think we'll drop on there now. You know, Paul in the chat, he was on episode like seven of FTP uh, where we we made our own PlayStation Mini and what we think mm. would be in it. Now we threw some we threw some silly ones in there yeah. like Shame One Cricket ninety nine and having said that, <clears throat> FF seven which is going to be on it and FF nine which Paul wants are both coming to the Switch very very soon. So, mm. that's a good point. See, like, for me... Because the only games I care about from PS1 era are pretty much the Final Fantasy games. Yeah. Everything else since then has had a remaster or a remake or is available on my Vita or whatever. Except The Legend of Dragoon, which Mm. it's a mission. If if that's on it, I'm buying this thing day one. There's no ifs and or buts about it. I think we will get, oh, ideally, Metal Gear Solid on there. That would... Because that's such a PS1 staple. Do you think Konami will be up for it at this point? Well, Konami are making games again, so it's open. Mm. Um, I would like to see uh, Silent Hill on there. It's another Konami deal. Mm. Two very important PS1 titles there. Mm. Maybe Soul Reaver, Legacy of Kane. 
you know like you know a bunch of those like maybe medieval maybe siphon siphon filter would be a must the first party so with with sony ben, i think you're going so. too hard <clears throat> they're not going to put all of them on one so well f- siphon filter they can first party that's easy mm. uh, metal gear would be huge silent hill would be huge legacy of kane's very niche so it's kind of unlikely but. all this really does for me is highlight the lack of ports on current gen for this stuff all it shows me is that this is we'll never see backwards compatibility in a, in this regular sense what do you mean in, in the ps4 yeah the ps4 yeah we already started. i think we <laughs> yeah, yeah no, but it's like like moving, like even moving forward we're not going to see it like even with the, the xbox one have done that you know they don't have to read an xbox classic because they've got it all supported on their fucking console so they don't need to do this shit you know what I mean? Yeah. And like we, we've seen that ex- they will. <clears throat> oh yeah, like we've seen that we've seen this exact thing with with Nintendo. Like now that they now that they've got these classics, they don't need to have a virtual console. Mm-hmm. And the virtual console they have, quote unquote, <laughs> is behind the Fucking Nintendo Switch garbage. Online, and it's poo. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So like they don't have because nostalgia makes money. Nostalgia prints money. I'd argue that if they released the whole back catalogue at the games three dollars each, they would make more money over over the years that they did off the. SNES classics. They would make substantial. Even Platinum would when make people can pick and choose. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'd. I'm not a marketing guy, yeah. but it just seems to me that if they're like, here's every game from like GameCube backwards, three to five dollars each. I reckon they'd make money hand over fist compared to what they would make from their mini consoles. Yeah, even with the, even if PS One classics made its made its way to the PlayStation Four, so you'd say, oh, we're going to charge Australian fifteen bucks for PS PS Two games. Well, I do on the Vita, <clears throat> like. Crash is like seven bucks. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean, like, if they did that on the PS4, mm. like, because that's eighty million people. Like, you know, I'm don't know, I don't I don't know whether you put the news article in there, but they're ceasing production of the Vita. Yeah, I did. Oh, okay, we'll get to that in a minute. But why <clears> can <throat> the Vita have it and the PS4 can't? My exact point. Fucking tell me. My exact point. Fucking tell me. I want, as I want to play these games, but I'm not gonna pull that like. There's not enough. There's not enough triggers on the Vita for me to play Metal Gear Solid well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and like my, like I'm not gonna go hunt down the PS3 that can do PS2 games. Fuck that noise. Mm. Oh, and mind you, this the uh, the mini the classic only it only does 720p anyway. So that's PS3 can do PS2 games. Oh, it's got one. I love these. That's PS3. at my house actually. <gasps> bring them with tro- Paul says bring them with trophy support and they guarantee a bunch of yeah although I don't know if I'd really want trophy support <clears throat> in my old games maybe there was some there was some interesting there was some interesting wording in, in this it's like you know there's going to be 20 I think I think they said 20 games at launch mm. what if there's an inbuilt little store like then you can you can like inbuilt storage that's just even more of a spit in the face <laughs> fuck that that's fucking dumb if they do that like, hey, there's 20 on here, but there's room for 40. Yeah, there's room for 40 for five bucks each. Just put them on the fucking PSN. <laughs> Bunch of But dicks. yeah, it's an app, like, understandably, it only outputs at like 480 or 720, which yeah. makes sense because they're on PS1s, which was 4, 480 anyway. But I like, hope the cords are longer than 60 centimeters. Imagine trying cards. to put that 720 shit on my 4K TV. Mm. In the correct resolution, that's literally this big on my fucking TV. Yeah. Stretched out. So you have to buy an old CRT. It's going to be all bad. Number two, with 3.3 million copies sold within the first three days of its release, Insomniac Spider-Man for PS4 is the fastest-selling first-party PlayStation game of all time. USA Today reported the sales milestone for Spider-Man, indicating that assuming all copies were sold at the standard retail price of 60 bucks, you were... 60 bucks US today worked out that those 3.3 million copies sold out to be about 198 million bucks Jesus though of course the collector's editions of the game would factor into those sales not included in either of those figures are copies that were sold as part of the $400 US PlayStation 4 Pro bundle that comes with the copy of Spider-Man backed in I underestimate the power of Marvel yeah because I haven't touched it this week I'm like meh I'm really just meh on it but apparently not everyone else was it I got my credits and I'm probably going to leave it until the DLC comes and then I might jump back in. Like, I was thinking about going for the plat, <clears throat> but mm, I got... A buddy of mine got the plat. Who did? A buddy of mine got the plat. Oh, nice. Pretty, pretty Very cool. Easily. Uh, I just can't be dicking around with all the extra stuff. Mm. Kind of uh, but I mean, congrats. To Fuck yeah. Fuck like, yeah. It's, it's really... like We thought God of War was going to be the big one, but like that power of Marvel and that power of that brand recognition of Spider-Man is huge. It's more, I think, that it appeals to a much younger audience as well yeah God of, you know you're not gonna buy God of War for your 12 year old kid or anything like that you wouldn't 
I mean, I would. Alex has played it at home. He, <laughs> like, he loves it. But you know what I mean? In general, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, parents <clears> picking <throat> game for their for their kids who might be under 10. Spider-Man or God. Well, anyway, Spider-Man. Because it's Spider-Man. Well, war's in the title. I was like, yeah. give show my some war. Well, people are scared of spiders too. You know, That's also true. Spider-Man. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it's really good. And hopefully, like it, because it, we've had Gorilla with Horizon go kapunk. We've had Insomniac with Spider-Man go Phew. Now, What's interesting? To, what will be interesting after this is if Sony are finally going to pull the trigger and buy Insomniac. Well, they had they did in the past, right? And they, they had them, them in the go. past. They let them go, and then they've had many, many, you know, <clears throat> back and forth with them over the years. I think there was a discussion with Insomniac. I can't remember who it was. I think- Paul James in the chat got the Spidey plat. Oh, nice! Mm, congrats. Um, I think there was a discussion where I think one of the heads of, of Insomniac were like, "No, nah, we dig being independent." <clears throat> like we'll work with the big guys and we'll do exclusives, but we like we dig being independent. Well, they can firmly plant their feet now. Yeah, they got no nothing, one's gonna fuck with they them. They got now. nothing to worry about now. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. Hopefully, it's Sunset Overdrive on the PS4 because that game's great. Ha- Sunset ha- Overdrive is great. <clears throat> Having played Sunset, how did that go with? I remember we talked about this last week. Mm. How did it go with Command Spider Man? Like, is it similar? No, not really. No, I nah. swear. It's it's very. There's a lot of open world traversal. <coughs> not like flying, but mm. you know, grinding along rooftops and then flipping onto like road barriers and shooting as you're grinding. So, yeah, the the the, the fluidity of movement is there, mm. but it's they're not at all similar. Oh, okay. Like at all. Cool, cool, cool. But it, they are. It did show that they can do like this fast paced movement system with combat in it too. I suppose. Nice. Love it. Number three, Rockstar Games has announced today that Red Dead Redemption 2 multiplayer will be called... Take a guess. Take a fucking wild guess. Horse Testicles Online. Mm, I think it might be Red Bread Online. Close. Red Dead Online. Dreads. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And launched sometime in November of 2018. According to an exclusive Q&A with the development team behind Red Dead Online, it will take elements from the original Red Dead Redemption's multiplayer, quote, much further and combine that with everything we've learned in the years since with our favourite elements of GTA Online. The initial launch period will be considered a public beta, according to the post from Rockstar's Newswire. Quote, we feel Grand Theft Auto Online really only found its feet creatively with heists, said Josh Needleman, senior producer at Rocks. Rockstar San Diego office. Our aim is, is uh, our aim this time is to get there a bit quicker, but still be responsive to what people enjoy playing and evolve as we go. Anyone who purchases Red Dead uh, Two will get access to Red Dead Online. Well, thanks, thank you for that. Woo! That's, woo I'm glad we get that for free. So there's a couple of things here that that are that are no surprise to me personally. Like I knew it wouldn't be a day one online thing because they want people to enjoy the story. They spent yeah. fucking years working on this story. They want you to do it. Mm. And plus, they did the same thing with GTA Five. They gave you like I think it was only like three weeks, or two weeks maybe. Mm. So they even they give them months. Obviously, the, the story might be a bit denser. Um, and when GTA Online launched originally on the PS. I'd be originally on the PS3. That shit was broken. <clears throat> mm. like you couldn't get in. I so I, I guess that's why they're going like, it's technically a public beta. Mm. So you that, can't criticize this because it's way, a beta. It hap- yeah, if it happens to crumble, they're like, yeah. we told you it was a beta. But I'm still fucking stoked. That game is literally less than a week, less than a month away at this point. Mm. And I can't fucking wait. Which only down so means that means the pack's literally a month away and that part's exhausting. I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still... I'll wait. Yeah, I haven't checked. I haven't jumped on anything else. Like, I've not watched any trailers. I've not watched any... Like, I know, I know that a bunch of outlets have had hands-on at the moment. Me either. <clears throat> I don't care. No. <laughs> yeah, but mine comes from, I'm just going to enjoy it. Like, yeah. I, I, I've... I've, I've, I've in the same boat as you. Like, with Spider-Man, not knowing a whole bunch, going in there and being like, <gasps> it was good. Mm. It was really good. I enjoyed yeah. that a lot. Yeah. I'll probably end up here. Yeah, maybe because it pa- maybe it packs when we're surrounded by all these games and they're like Red Dead, woo woo woo. But there's a Red Dead booth and you're like, yeah. I'll buy it depends because around that same time is the Gwent re-release, so Ooh. that'll be my last game of the year that I need to play. The last game ever. Number four, Activision has teased what players can expect from COD Black Ops 4's post-launch content and announced it will come to PS4 first. Because that's healthy for the industry. On the PlayStation <coughs> blog, no. Activision confirmed all free post-release content updates will be available first for PlayStation players, but no details, of course, on the period of exclusivity were announced. <coughs> Activision also gave some detail on Black Ops 4's free post... Did I copy and paste that twice? 
No, I didn't. Which will include <laughs> an addition of a revamped version of the fan favorite map, Nuketown. No surprise there, because that's in every game since mm-hmm. it was ever. In November and December, we'll see the inclusion of several new specialists. Treyarch announced on Monday evening that changes will be making changes they'll be making for the full launch of uh, Blackout. Uh, the changes come from player feedback after the beta was extended earlier. Treyarch lifted the player cap to 100 players. Treyarch said they wanted to. Why am I just. Why am I losing. These, all these paragraphs look the fucking same. <laughs> Treyarch said they wanted to look at the biggest feedback they received from the Black Ops 4 community from the beta and, quote, provide some deeper insights into what we're doing to improve the game. Some areas they will be tracking uh, and updating include armor, audio adjustments, inventory, and item management, and Xbox One performance. Yeah, so some of the things that they mentioned, they were reducing the volume. Seven days, Paul says, for the exclusivity of that DLC. That's so much better than the 30 days it used to be. Remember back in PS3? Holy yeah. shit. Then again, <coughs> Xbox did pull a year's worth with Tomb Raider. So yeah, fuck j- them a jokes. little bit. <laughs> um, oh, I'm starting to lose my voice apparently. <coughs> um, so, yeah. So some of the things they are adjusting is they're adjusting the footsteps of your squad. So that way you don't hear, <gasps> like yeah. I did with Buddy like three times. Yeah. Fortnite had the same kind of thing initially yeah. at the start where everyone's footsteps were just footsteps. Um, uh, they, so they, they, don't, they don't know what to do with armor from what I was reading. Yeah, because it looks it, like they brought it down a bit. Brought it down a bit because it was too powerful. But if you just get lucky and don't have armor, you're pretty fucked. Yeah. In, uh, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's there's more kind of stuff. Yeah, look, you know? I, you know, we we as we said last week, we played it, we enjoyed it. I'm keen for it. I reached mm. out to Activision and said, "Hey, we loved it. Any chance you hook us up in a, a couple of weeks?" Wait and see on that one. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, quick bits. Fortnite had its biggest month ever in August with 78.3 million players. PUBG did not. <laughs> Pub- PUBG had its worst month ever. <laughs> Rocket League has surpassed 50 million players worldwide. PlayStation Vita will cease production in Japan come 2019. PUBG for PS4 has been spotted on the Korean ratings board. THQ Nordic, Norden, I wrote, Nordic <laughs> acquired Alone in the Dark and Active War IPs. <clears throat> And one we'll get into a little bit is uh, Telltale having major layoffs and essentially ceasing to be a business. So, out of what's there, Vita? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is. Uh, it does so, have... No, I'm sorry, with the, with the Final Fantasy games coming to the Switch, mm. literally all I have my Vita for is if I ever want to play Persona 4 again. Yeah. That's it. And it sucks, because I'm like... I just I want you gone now, yeah. But I can't because of this well, one for, game. See, even now for collection purposes, I want that slim. I want the PS the PS Vita slim because I know once they cease production, that shit's going to triple in price. Oh, just in time <clears> for <throat> Christmas. Good point. Ooh. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to leverage the PlayStation Classic in time for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> PUBG listing on the Korean ratings board is a little, probably a little bit too late now. Yeah, no, it's, no, it, it's done. Yeah, you've PUBG's done at this point. Um, THQ Nordic just acquiring more people. I learned the dark, horrible franchise, but I love Alone in the Dark New Nightmare on PS2. Mm. That shit well, it was on PS1 as well, I think. That shit was awesome. Yeah, loved it. That was like that was like Alone in the Dark has always been a straight up Resident Evil clone. Which is fine, because it was really good for me. Well, la- last <clears> week <throat> we reported that THQ also bought Kingdoms of Amalur. Mm. Uh, but since then, it's came out that EA still have the publishing rights for it. So oh. EA have to be like, you know, yay or nay. But it, when THQ were asked about Kingdoms of Amalur, they were like, um, you know, we'll, we'll, before we d- put out any statements about what we're doing with it, we'll put our heads together, we'll have a think tank and all that. It's like, shouldn't you have done all that before you bought the IP? Yeah. No, so they're really just kind of fucking doing anything. But I do think, I think in the same, as you sort of mentioned last week, I think they just have like a fishbowl of little bits of paper that has all the, like, we, we're we going to work on yeah. Amalur. All right, sit down, ready? Let's go. Which is which is great, because in terms of creativity as a studio, mm. have, having that shit extend open, I'm going to give that a refresh, actually. Maybe got some more updates since. Nah, I mean, like 20 minutes. Yeah, who knows? I've got, I've got all I need to say, I think. Beautiful. Uh, so the last bit of news that was breaking news. Speculation about layoffs and the possible closure of the, of Telltale Studio began. Wait, I should, probably shouldn't start there. Telltale have fired everyone except for twenty people. Those yeah, tw- that 25, studio is is done. Those twenty five people that are left are reportedly <clears throat> from anonymous sources just working on Minecraft, uh, the Netflix story mode adaption. No word on the Walking Dead from there. Uh, la- last update I saw mm. uh, was Walking Dead is done. Mm. So those that have bought season passes... Paul said something about season pass in the chat just before. Uh, let me, go ju- let me jump back up there the and see. he bought the season pass for it. <clears throat> Paul says... 
Uh, I've emailed for a refund from Telltale because I bought the season pass and it seems they won't be meeting their end of the bargain. So, so they, they've laid off hundreds of people. <coughs> None of me. them got severance packages. In a quote from someone who was laid off. Uh, where did I see that? Uh, according to The Verge and multiple reports on social media, laid off employees weren't given any severance. Quote, none of my sleepless nights or long hours on weekends trying to ship a game on time got me severance today, Brandon Sabenka said, who was a character artist for Telltale. Don't work overtime unless you're paid for it, y'all. Protect your health. Companies don't care about you. Ouch. Brutal. That's fucking brutal. So this, this comes at a, a weird place for me. A, for for people that are, consu- that are, that are purchases, Ball's not going to fill out that season pass. Mm. Uh, it's you know because that that also ends. I think Guardians of the Galaxy was getting a new season. There was like not that long ago they announced there was going to be like um, uh, Wolf Among Us two. Mm-hmm. And there was a Stranger Things one. Mm-hmm. There was a couple of things lined up, but then to have it suddenly drop like this is a bit fucked. Uh, from an employee perspective, that is balls. Mm-hmm. That's so balls. A lot of them had to see like you can imagine the water cooler discussions of like. We're doing too much. Like this is not okay. You know, <clears throat> shh, 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 shh. You know here comes the boss. Shut up, shut up, shut up. And that's from a business perspective. From the from the business perspective, th- there's writing on the walls for this mm. man. Like the, for We've years, known for, a while. for years, Telltale have seemed to be just taking or taking on more, not fixing what was there, not releasing games to a, to their schedule, releasing broken games, games that would just either, either a would drop, crash, and delete your saves. <clears throat> like there was things here that should have been fixed. They should have. Well, they were away. trying. They did address it. That yeah. W- but by the time they started working on the that, damage it was too, was too done. little, too late. Um, <clears throat> and as Paul says in the chat, Clementine's story probably won't come to an end, which is pretty sad. Which is a bummer. Because it's I, a real I, bummer. I played season one and two, uh, and then I was I, I was just waiting at that point for like the whole pack to come. Mm. In. You know, here's the Walking Dead Telltale game for fifty bucks, and here's everything, and then I'll get through. It. But yeah, that is sad. Having said all that. We did get the classic tales from the Borderlands from them, which is their best game, and mm. I will not have it disputed. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. Yep. But yeah, that's uh. Yeah, it's it's. Ne- a- Netflix can't be happy because they've just signed this deal. Oh yeah. To do, I think was Stranger Things supposed to be on their streaming uh, thing I as think well? So I think as it well, was. Yeah. That and Minecraft. Um, and that's obviously. Well, Stranger Things being a Netflix property, yeah. Yeah, I think <clears> it, I think it was originally. So yeah, Netflix must be pretty butthurt about that too. Well, it's it's interesting that uh, that even the funding that come from that Netflix deal didn't save them. Mm. Yeah, which either means a they were in fucking deep. They must have been in really deep so, and tried their hardest to get this deal with Netflix, hoping it would pull them out of that hole. And it didn't. Yeah. It's a bummer, but once like, definitely I, a bummer for mm. the literal literal hundreds yeah. of employees that just lost their jobs. For, yeah, for the employees, <laughs> you know. I know, I know it means absolutely nothing for some two random fucks on the internet, but uh, hope you guys can get some, some employment soon and get your life back into some sort of into normality. The thing is, though, is that because Telltale's name has pretty, been pretty shit for the last couple mm-hmm. of years, you know, you put that on your resume and it's like, it's not but, a... But now with this story, people are going to see that and be like, yeah, come here. Yeah, hopefully. Because yeah. I, th- I, 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 I don't think it was a talent issue. No. I think it was a scheduling issue. Like, like you it's have a to... a management just, issue. Yeah. They yeah, just went too hard. It does seem like, str- like obviously, huge mismanagement here. Mm. Yeah. That's, and that's bum. That's super bum. Right, all right. That's it for the news as we have a chat to the players about our favourite games of the current generation. This is your topics. I got nothing here. Run, tell them what, what, why, we, why we picked this one. I couldn't think of any more topics. <laughs> and I thought we haven't done this, this particular no, one before. Uh, <clears throat> and I was just randomly sitting on the couch and I looked at something I made. Like, I liked a particular video game enough to make something. Like, actual, like, crafting something. Mm. And I've never done that before. And I'm like, this is a really... I really, really like this franchise. Let's talk about that. So, as we do, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do one each, one each, one each? Do you want to do the communities first and then ours? <coughs> we'll, we'll bump. I think we'll get, it, we'll get ours out of the way. And then we'll jump into the community. Because we've got a lot of responses, thankfully. Mm-hmm. So, we, we'll, we can dive through a little bit there. And then we can add to what, it, we can add to what they've picked yeah. as well. So... I've got four, I got four, and I didn't go straight for the the givens. You know, mm. God of War, Horizon. Yes, I fucking loved those games. Okay, so did everyone else. Yeah, well, in that case, you know what I mean, let's cross my first one off, which is clearly God of War. Yeah, that's a fucking given. I I have talked about that game consistently since yeah. I played it. As as I've, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, no game has ripped my heart out emotionally 
I've never been so emotionally invested in a game like God of War, especially in a franchise that I've, I've always enjoyed, but I never thought that I would get that connection. Like the other day, I was on fucking Twitter, and then I saw a photo of Kratos, like it was a photo from the like a, a drawing from the back, and it have it had uh, Kratos walking away with Atreus and his daughter from like the other uh-huh. games but she was more like a ghost i'm like yeah. <laughs> like you're fucking crying at twitter i'm like oh <laughs> like that, <laughs> like that like that's that's where this game is for me yeah. yeah you know what i mean it was just a sweet little thing and i was like fuck yeah and like no ve- almost no other game has ever delivered that for yeah. me so this is certainly one of my top games if not the top game of this yeah. generation for and me. horizon is to given the story was good Mm. Uh, but the world was fantastic, and it was really just the the intricacies of the combat system. Yeah, and the gameplay was dope. The gameplay, the gameplay, and the combat were phenomenal, like it, un, unmatched for <coughs> for me. open world combat. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, that's a given too. So I didn't. I wanted to. Yeah, the the omission of those kinds of games from the lists don't mean we don't like them. It's just this is talk, talk about something. This is completely a subjective list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go pick one. Uh, objective. Subjective. No, it's subjective. It's about well, I got my first one out of the way. Definitive. Definitive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lock that shit in. Oh, I got mine out of the way. Mum has got a war, so you can jump in the next one. No, I said we were avoiding those. Oh, but that's on my list. Really? Yeah. I can't not put God of War on that list. I can't. So we, <clears throat> we're, we're very bad with our topics. We're normally the day before we decide you know, what we want to do. Whereas this time we had a whole week and Ryan was not prepared. No, I, is it, I've, I've had a very mentally draining week this week, so it kind of it, it completely escaped my brain. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll, 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 I'll think of a, I'll think of a fourth one for you. Okay, Pyre, <laughs> Super Giant. Yeah, you love that one earlier Fucking in the year. Love that game. So Super Giant Games started off with uh, they started getting notoriety, I think, in 2012 for Bastion, and then I think 2015 for Transistor. Mm-hmm. Uh, both very good games in their own right. But Pyre, for me, it was something else. It's essentially a visual novel involving sports. And that sounds just... It sounds <coughs> dumb. Yeah, isn't it like but religious what, basketball? Pretty much. So what it is, essentially, <coughs> is criminals get sent to the underworld. They're not killed. It's just like the world under the world where just the scum live. Mm. And one person a year can get out by competing in this this sports game. And then you go all the way to the finals. And then when you, if you win the finals, you got to pick someone who was in the team to ascend and get out. And that that's that's what it is. But it's the way they they deliver this story, and it's so compelling. And you, the you got about eight characters that you can get on your team, and they all have their own sto- backstories. You know how they got in there, why they want to get out, what's waiting for them on the, the other side. One of them doesn't want to go out, but. You know, do you want to send him out? Do you want to send this one out because he's the best one on your team? So you lose him from your team, but then <coughs> he deserves to get out. So do you dick him around and be like, nah, I need, this one. Like, you're, I need you, you because you're yeah, my good I need player. you because you know, you're, you're the MVP, yeah. man. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just very interesting narrative and very compelling gameplay. I got the Platinum. Very happy with that Platinum. That was a difficult Platinum. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it is there, like, Creme, creme de la creme? Is that how they say it? Yeah, what's, sure. what's, the, what's the phrase? The best. It's the best game they've put out. Because <laughs> <laughs> Bast- Bastion's very good. <clears throat> That's where I first kind of got my start with them. And that just came to Switch, I think, as well. Uh, Transistor, I couldn't get into. I was like, I've tried like eight times mm. to get through that game. I'm like, no, I'm just not feeling it. Uh, but Pyre is... It, if I played it the year it would have came out, which I think was last year, it would be my game of the year. Because mm. I played it this year, at the start of this year. That's true, we did, um, yeah. Yeah, that game is fucking awesome. And Super Giant are good guys. And the music's good. I even tweeted the music director. I'm like, dude, this soundtrack is fucking dope. He's like, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm like, hi, you're surprised. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing I love about the smaller studios like mm. Super Giant is when you do reach out to them on social media or Twitter, they have a tendency to reply in a personal way. Yeah, like, dude, as an example, so at, it's not, not on my list of games, but uh, at work... Uh, we're using Death Squared mm. because A, it's co-op, B, it's frustration tolerance, three, it's, you know... A, B, three. Yeah. Oh, sorry, C. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm at this, at working there. Uh, so, like, and C, it's, you know, it's like, the way the levels are structured... Critical thinking. Critical thinking, failure is always an option, 
and you can learn from that failure and adapt from that failure. And with the way each level is structured, depending whatever color you are, mm. you may take the lead in this one, you may take the lead, and you may not take lead for five more. So it's all about shifting like responsibilities, shifting responsibilities, and whoever can take the lead in the puzzle. I emailed SMG Studios because they're Australian mm. and they're buddies with Ethan, so it worked out really well. <clears throat> and I was like, hey, man, this is what we're doing. Blah, 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 blah. We, we should say what we're doing, why we love your game. This is amazing. And then within like a day, they're like, hey, man, holy shit. Yeah, thank you so much. Like, mm. and then we can do it to help you out. I'm like, I didn't want anything. Yeah, that's that, but, just saying. But thanks, man. Some, some sick merch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did say, if you guys want anything, code, swag, let me know. Yeah. So I may send them, like, hey, we've got this new site. We need some posters and shit. Mm. Do you have any? Yeah, that's what I love about these. <clears throat> but yeah, the same thing is like, yeah. Like, they have a tendency to reply yeah. to you. Like I could gush all day to Corey to Corey Barlog about about God of War. Never hear back. Mm. Yeah, but you you got to think like how many million people are doing the same thing. You exactly. Know? So that that you know, I like you feel kind of a personal connection, especially when they reply to you. Yeah. It's like oh, oh. and you know maybe you just made that guy's <clears throat> day. You know. Yeah. Your next one. My next one also a given for me is stardew valley now i understand this game may have been somewhat pushing this generation i think maybe on the pc near or maybe not before i'm not sure no, no. very clearly in this generation yeah. fuck yeah all right cool i love stardew I mean, valley it was, was he was he's been developing it for like seven years yeah so he started making it out of this gen but it didn't release until this gen. yeah i just couldn't remember where it was on where it, where it fell on pc because i was on pc first and then it took a little while to come through onto uh onto I playstation guarantee you it's not uh, <clears throat> 2016. Oh, we're good. PC. We're good. You're well in. Uh, yeah, so Stardew Valley is is absolutely perfect for me. It's a farming game. It has, it, but it, it also has, it has the roots and the ground system, like pun intended. It has the roots of Harvest Moon. Mm. And then when you go and read, um, you know, Blood, uh, Sweat and Blood, Sweat and Pixels, he talks about how that, you know, how he and his partner and the big influence for this game was Harvest Moon, Back to Nature. PlayStation 1. Fucking <laughs> game of all time for me. Mm. So, like, knowing that it came from the same place, the, the place that I love, I knew I was going to I was gonna fall in love with it. Yeah, the same thing, because it came out when we were at EB last year? Last year on Switch, yeah. Last year on Switch, and it came out at, like, midnight. Like, and I got midnight. you to wake me up so I could start the download <laughs> using the data from my phone. Phone. Yeah, we didn't have internet. No, so we did, but it was fucking shit or something. Yeah, um, and yeah, I played it. I played it for about sixty hours. Yeah, um, like yeah, I didn't even make it to the end of year three. I just, I don't, I don't feel like I need to. Well, you destroyed your farm in the best way. Like you, you were a machine. You had nothing left to do in terms of your farm. Yeah, no, my the farm is done. Th- the only thing you could do was schmooze the fa- like the people in the town, but. Yeah. All I could do is like try to maximize profits at that mm. point, but then it was like, well, I don't really need like I don't, why? Yeah, you know what I mean, but I had like mega sprinklers and all that. Kind of stuff. <coughs> yeah, no, it's very very. Good yeah, no, I, I love that game just beyond everything. And is like, the multiplayer out yet? Not yet on PC it is, but there's I, I don't believe it's on consoles yet. Yeah, but I um I can't. So you're 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 hitched. Yeah, because Bunny, <laughs> Bunny and I are already engaged, and we're yeah. gonna get uh, farm married. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. And my next one is Alienation by Housemark. Holy shit, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a throwback. That's the first ever video review I did for us. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was living with mum and dad at the time, actually. Uh, so as we know, Housemark are no longer doing their arcade stuff, mm-hmm. which is a damn shame. Because Alienation, I must have put in probably 300 plus hours over the years. I still go back to it to this day. And, and I won it through PlayStation. Yeah, you got four codes for it. Yeah, I And then it. he's never played it with me. I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go. And he's just never did it. Well, because you, because like at that, we're like, yeah, we'll play it. And then you're like, yeah, I'm finished with it. Yeah, because it was like three months later <laughs> that you're like, finally like, yeah, okay, let's give it a go. Uh, anyway. I'll jump in it right now. I'll jump in it right now if you want to. It's like the epitome well, of, right now. like what Housemark are good at. Mm. You know, they, it's your yeah, isometric 2.5D twin stick shooter. But it's also... Uh, like you, you loot grindy fest. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, you know you can do all the levels, <clears throat> and you do them on the hard, and then you go to like world three, which is even harder. And it's essentially Diablo, but twin stick shooter with aliens. And the the weapons. Oh, that's get, why it tickles your fancy. Yeah, and the the weapons are like really creative. Like you can get a boomerang that you throw, and it comes back. But it's like I don't know when you screen like this, but it's like <laughs> because there are hordes of fucking aliens there. And the, I don't know. It just I love sci-fi. I love cyberpunk. I love loot 'em ups. 
I love repeatable content in that way. Um, and I love Housemark. Mm. And the, but, you know, play like looking at that and looking at what they're doing now. Even though obviously we don't know anything about it, it's really sad to see yeah. to see them. And, and, and you, got, you can't like, have to go with the money. Their initial sometimes. statement made me sad when they're like, "We can't do this anymore because while our games are critically acclaimed, they're just not selling enough." Which is is fair. They are a pretty pretty niche kind of game. Mm. Um, yeah, you got to go where the money goes. But I feel like by the time they get where the money is, the money will be somewhere else. Yeah, because they're obviously making a battle royale at this point, which is I don't, I don't know. But Alienation <coughs> is arguably their best game, one of the best games on PS4. Nice. My next one, because like, if you, you're seeing a trend here. My trend is is the emotional connection that I'm having with said game. Mm. So my next one is South Park: The Fractured But Whole. A different kind of emotional attachment. Yeah, yeah. that that is because I love poop, South poop, Park. Poop jokes. It's poop jokes, <laughs> and I laugh like very. Few, there are a bunch of games that try to be funny, mm. and you go, huh. mm. but South Park had me like out loud laughing because it's hunched. like you're watching an episode it for is the most part. now spoilers for fractured butthole my my like do you care no <clears throat> one of my favorite favorite fucking things about it is when they reveal who the villain is who was it uh, mitch connor you know fucking Cartman's oh, hand. oh yeah i think i already knew that <clears throat> so like there, there's a point where you're like because you know Cartman's investor we need to find out who this person is we need to find like yeah and they find out it's Mitch Connor it's like we fucking know that's you dude like we know it's you he's like I don't know it's Mitch Connor I got nothing to do with it. I think I was no actually I was far enough in the game where Mitch Connor was a character <clears throat> yeah, yeah loved it absolutely loved it and the idea that like someone gave I think Mitch Connor gave Butter a ton of money to build an army but just Mexican mm. dudes wrapped in tinfoil yeah. like even then, like Stick of Truth is so fantastic, but Stick of Truth came, which was also out this gen. Uh, it was on PS3 originally. Oh, was it? Yeah, PS3 March 2014. Yes, yeah, so it was on PS3, and then it did come across. PS4 came out in 2013. Was it? Was it dual release? No, no, it's just PS3. So PS4 was out before then. Mm. No, but I only dropped, only dropped on PS3, so it didn't. You know, it's on PS4 now. It came with Fractured Butthole, but it didn't at the oh, time. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah. So like Stick of Truth is great, but they really. It was a it was a small time turn based RPG. There was mm. la- there was no movement. It was just lanes, and like the, they we really tell that they were just putting as much in the story as they could. Not in terms of let's tell a compelling story, as in let's just put a bunch of funnies. Let's just put like we're only gonna, we're only going to make one of these. Let's jam it, mm. right? We 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 stick of truth like we weren't gonna we weren't going to make a second one. So we stick of truth is like we can now literally do whatever the fuck. We yeah, and like that's why you fight a giant fetus. Just because you can, <clears throat> like yeah. with this one, it's a bit, it's a bit more toned down in that sense. But I feel it punches harder because it's not just throwing it, whatever. It's really it's focused. Sh- it's focused, and it fits in with you know the the Coon and Friends, which are at that point have had like six episodes, so they're fleshed out, mm. and like that world is is just awesome. Mm-hmm. I love South Park, and yeah, this game just brings that in. And there's like nothing, like nothing makes me laugh it made me laugh so hard when we went hands on with it at EB Expo I think or maybe no it was EB Expo not PAX when they put the smell of vision on it yeah well the smell of vision holy shit that yeah. one's fucking funny too yeah. um, when you're in the strip club and then you like the, the mission and the, the hands on mission was you had to make a drink to give to the DJ mm. but you need to so that he would bring a particular person Strip-up. out yeah. but you needed to get him away from the booth and you could sneak back so you make a drink and you have to fart in the drink mm. and, you give it to, and you give it to the guy and he's like hey thanks little man I think someone's farted in my drink <laughs> and he leaves you know what I mean it's like <laughs> Like that's such a dumb joke, but at the time at EB Expo, tears mm. in that booth by myself. Yeah. You know, and then I come home like a couple months later, play it, fucking tears again because it's just one like just how did this, this guy know that someone farted in his drink? Can he is someone farted in his drink before? There's like, another story here. <laughs> there's an extra layer here. <laughs> nah, fractured mud hole is fucking fantastic. <laughs> one, it's literally one of my, like the games I've never I've never laughed that hard at a game before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rocket League, easy, easy. It's weird because I fucking hate sports games. Mm. Cannot stand them. And there's two f- sports games in my top four. In my top four, <laughs> that's true. Pyre is technically a sports game because you you are playing a ball sport. Mm. <coughs> uh, I don't know. I don't really know what to say about Rocket League. I mean, it's just fun. 
it's my I've said it before it's my junk food game it's like I don't know what to play I'm in between games I'm gonna play Rocket League and I always have a good time and I, I like that you can always kind of feel your skill gap changing mm. like three months ago I couldn't drive up a wall and hit the ball off it and aerial the ball I can now it's like well, I couldn't do that three months ago I'm getting better at the game like you there are very clear measures of skill mm. and it's like you know the being able to read the plays, like see what they see what the other team's doing, uh, like dribbling the ball, doing fake outs, and all that kind of like. There's so many different layers to it other than just it's car soccer, mm. which it is. That's like it fundamentally is car soccer. Uh, but it, it's been fascinating seeing it just go from a big risky PS Plus game because it came out on PS Plus to this monolith of a game that's multi-million dollar esports competition prizes and all that kind of stuff as well mm. like I said in the news they just hit fifty over 50 million players worldwide and it's cool because uh, Noclip did a, one of their documentaries on it as well and just seeing how Sionics was like they did was it super rocket powered battle cars or something like that was Rocket League 15, 20 years ago <coughs> excuse me yes dumb Mm. It was just dumb. There wasn't a market for it. And then they kind of had to just live off doing other people's IPs and helping with assets and helping with all this other stuff without being able to do their own thing. And in their spare mm. time, they were like just chipping away at Rocket League, hoping it was their big break. And like, it's a very cool story and I feel like they deserve it. And like, it, it's fun expl like telling someone, explaining to someone what Rocket League is, seeing how dumb they think it is on their face. Oh no, it's really dumb. Like, what? car soccer but then you show them the game they're like this is fucking awesome this is so much fun mm. and that's what it is I, don't, I know it's not fun when you get into the competitive side because people get toxic and all that kind of stuff but just to jump in a casual game and play it's always fun Very like cool. to me it's just always fun and apparently 50 million other people agree it's just a small number small number small yeah. number. I want to stay away from the big games Sit this one that's got 50 million players on it. <laughs> <laughs> we all don't like big multiplayer games what do you play this week what do we <laughs> like first 17 hours <laughs> <laughs> alright what's your last one your uh, my last one is somewhat of a given as well uh, mine is Uncharted for a thief cent um, okay. for a couple of different reasons one emotional connection as well like it's the thing that Tomb Raider lacks. It's like, it's the characters, man. Like, I am invested in Nate, Elena, Sully, even the fucking side characters like Chloe and, you know, like Nadine and fucking Sam. Sam, in one, in one in game. In one game. Like, I'm like invested in Sam. Like, <clears throat> there is such a fine crafted game here. Like, there, like there's a fine crafted story story here like even if the gameplay was bollocks like i would still love these characters and that's that's where it came from so after you know i didn't play it for the 10 years that uncharted's been around i'll probably give it like six maybe i think i came in about uh, two had been out for a while at that point i was the same no um, i didn't play it till mm, the collection came out mm. so like i you know i didn't have that from day one love but that gave you know haven't been able to sit through one and two at the time and be like and then sort of fall into three and then fall into four like I, I, I it was it's such a good ending mm. to Nate's story Nate's adventure and like you like you're in fact like you just you can't help but be invested in this story with the, him and Elena and watching them sort of get together and then argue know, and then argue Nate falls back like, into oh. it it's not for the reasons you think it's to help my brother no it's not like, no that's, this that's is you your, that's your faux pass like yeah. you say it's to help your brother but this is what you want to do um, and one of the coolest moments in gaming is when they sat down and played Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, that because was just, it's real. Yeah, like not it's because so real. Not because they're playing Crash Bandicoot, which obviously is a big, big plus. Sticking about on the couch, talking about what's for tea, playing a game. It was real. Like they, yeah. they, they, yeah, they, they behaved like a real couple would, and except they would then go shoot a bunch of people. Well, Nate murdered just a like lot a real couple. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what you do on your weekends, but <laughs> we're here recording a podcast. Everyone else getting shot the fuck up. Oh, wait, this is not a. America. This is the purge. Ooh. 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 Uh, no, I, I yeah. I do like. I mean, do you, do you feel like the ending was open ended? I think it's. Hang on, let me just do this a minute. There we go. Was, oh, how long ago did that happen? No idea. All right, you were still coming through, but maybe maybe not quite. Because uh, anyway. the contacts were still there. Yeah. Um, 
I think it's, do, you, do you think it'll it's be like very minimally open ended? I think it's open ended as in Uncharted will continue as we've seen with the Lost Legacy. Mm. I don't see Nate's story continue. No, yeah, no, that's what I mean. Because you know they they did like spoilers. We may mention the ending of the of Uncharted. Oh, we're yeah. going to. We don't. Yeah. So Naughty Dog did you know Crash? They did Jack and Duck stuff, and Uncharted and The Last of Us. And it seems like they just left that one thread there with Nate's daughter. That if someone else wants to run with it at some point. Well, I think that may have come from a place of uh, with PlayStation being like, Uncharted is massive. Can you please... Just leave something. Leave a... Can you give us something? Like, you know... See, very rarely do you hear about a studio going back. Very rarely, because they've moved past that. They've evolved past that. Like, there is no way that you would get Naughty Dog A to make a Crash game or B a Jack game. Mm. Like, it just won't happen. Because they're like, well... Don't want them to. We don't want... You know, like, we did that 20 years ago. We don't Having want, said that, reading Blood, Sweat and Pixels, hearing how much uh, <clears throat> Neil and Bruce did not want to do Uncharted, period. Mm. Uncharted 4, I mean, because they just finished with The Last of Us. Amy Hennig has left, and the Naughty Dog execs were like, can you guys just, like, get the game back on track? And they ended up doing it all again, like, back-to-back games, The Last of Us to Uncharted, like, crunch into crunch. Like, they were fucked at the end of that game, and they didn't want to do it. And I th- it's very cool how it still ended up. It shows their love, yeah? Because if they didn't want to do it, they could have been like, you know, fucking whatever. But it still came out as, quote-unquote, a masterpiece. Mm. So it just shows how dedicated that studio is yeah. to, to this game. Yeah. Because yeah. no, that, that, that was another little another little tear-jerker moment for me as well with Uncharted. was at the end when they rap, when they do they do the credits. And at the end, you get that last little uh, little epilogue. Mm. I'm like, oh my God, they were good. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh fuck yeah either that or the kids are catalyst for Nate going on another adventure yeah, she true. gets like kidnapped we're, or, we're taken or, yeah taken yeah <laughs> <laughs> he does the Liam Eason thing <laughs> but no because it was it was good like even after all that bull like granted uh, life has never been hard for a Nathan Drake like he's always had it pretty well like it's that pulp that pulp action there's like well he's never really in danger mm. but like have, having knowing that him and Lane have this sweet lovely ending and you know like Sully's around and I'm like You just literally wipe snot on your cheek. I think, or is it a reflection on your glasses? Prove it both. My last one, <clears throat> the undisputed best game of this generation is Shovel Knight. Mm? Mm-hmm. That game is so fucking good. And reading, a lot of our games go back to read about reading Blood, Sweat and Pixels. But reading that their chapter in Blood, Sweat and Pixels just makes me appreciate it that much more. Seeing that the team of five guys were just stuck at this other studio I forget which one it was it's a big one and they're like hey we have an idea can we do it no go sit back at your desk and do this thing <coughs> oh, what about if we try this no get back to your desk and do this thing that we want you to do we think this would be really big fuck off and go do what we tell you to do mm. so they'd leave and they'd take their computers with them for on the weekend and overnight and like work on this game as much as they could and then like leaving and like remortgaging their houses to be able to afford to develop the game like they put everything on this game and then you see where Shovel Knight is now, where like it, Shovel Knight is coming to Super Smash Brothers, mm. not as a playable character, but like that is fucking amazing. Like because Nintendo just don't let any old dick into their to mm. appear in their, especially their major games. And there's like this little indie game from these five guys who like struggled to like like I said you know remortgage their houses and strain on the relationship and no savings, and now their character is appearing in like the biggest fighting game on the planet but for me it always comes down to the integrity of Yacht Club games like yeah. when they did a Kickstarter they're like we'll offer this we'll offer Three. the fo- we'll offer the following yeah. and to this day they still hmm. are supporting that like most they're most, over it they are over they it are they've over said it, that publicly they're hmm. overworking on Shovel Knight but and when asked why are you still doing it then it's like it's our obligation yeah, to our Kickstarter yeah so they had that integrity to be that like, no we keep our word and that is something in an industry where people don't keep their word like a fucking telltale mm-hmm. in a world with in like an industry where these people don't keep their word mm. this is the fucking shining example of a studio and there's obviously influences in the game from the old Super Mario 3 mm. with like that that world map that yeah, you move around map, yep. uh, from Mega Man with like the themed levels with the themed bosses that go with it yep. um, I love how each on each different platform there's a different kind of boss you fight like on Playstation mm. you get to fight Kratos Yeah, you literally get to fight Kratos in Shovel Knight like this game has kind of in a way like transcended being an indie game because it appears in so much and 
Yeah, they've got their multiplayer mode coming out next year and the final like DLC, the King of Cards DLC, which is free if you've already bought the Treasure Trove edition. Um, it's just a really cool story from guys that re- obviously really care and I, I like the game enough to buy 600 one by one centimeter blank cubes, hand painted all of them and built Shovel Knight out of pixel art that I have at my house. Mm. It's like 60 centimeters tall. It's about this big. I'll put a picture up if I can be fucked when I'm editing it. Um, <laughs> I've never done that before. Like, yeah. I've never liked a franchise enough to go, I need, I want merch. I can't get merch. I'll make my own thing. Like, I've never done that before. And that's, yeah, it's a testament to the game. That is something. It's the best game ever. Ever. <laughs> jumping into the Pop C community page and see what our lovely, lovely people uh, jumped on in. Now, uh, I did say it's games that, that released on the PS4. Mm. <clears throat> but uh, some people did take with, take with that and kind of run a little bit in terms of multi gen and stuff. Oh no, yeah, no. Uh, I, sorry, I not multi gen, as in like um, multi plat. Multi plat. That's what I meant from the start. Just yeah, well, well, as in they've just, they've, people throwing some Xbox in there and stuff as well, which fine. is fine. Uh, so James Waters uh, from Nerds and Places said, "Go so as of today, games released and playable right now or earlier, and only on current gen platforms." He put uh, Forza Horizon Three on Xbox One. I got a code for Forza Horizon Four. I haven't done anything with it yet. Debating whether I do. No. Because if I do, I have to, then I have to make a video about it. And I can't exactly be why I declined that code you offered me yesterday. For, for Mega Man? Mm. Yeah. Uh, he says PlayStation 4 is Horizon Zero Dawn. For multi plat, he put Assassin's Creed Origins. And for multi gen crossovers, he put Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and GTA 5. Breath of the Wild fucking sucks, though. What does? Breath of the Wild. Yeah, man! <laughs> That's why we're friends. No, I mean. Yeah, I could I could do an episode on why I don't like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I did. You I, re- did. I respect re- I respect his decisions. Yeah, like Assassin's Creed Origins, totally a good pick. Uh, people, would, you know, I know I know my stepfather loved it. I know the Jess Rock Mummy loved it. You know, like there's a bunch of love there for Assassin's Creed Origins, mm. um, and they're like, and for Assassin's Creed Origins is pretty good. That's why I reached out for Od- for Odyssey. I'm like, well, okay, well, let's see what they can improve on Origins. Origins was pretty good. Mm. Uh, moving on to good friend Buddy Watson. He says, my personal top 10 in order. Ooh. Start uh, from the bottom then. Work so, number up. 10, God of War. Nine, Transistor. Mm. Eight. Mm-hmm. Super giant. Good, good man. Overcooked one and two. Fuck yes for Overcooked. Overcooked is great. Uh, probably not in my top games, but I do I do love it a lot. I use it at work as well. Uh, Until Dawn. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Make that my fifth. <laughs> uh, Rezo Gun Rocket oh, House League Mark 2 Buddy 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 <laughs> Life is Strange uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild Ooh you lost his dead uh, bud Yeah no Celeste And then number one Was The Witness I fucking love The Witness Like that game Did outsmart me though Like I hit a barrier And I was too dumb For that game I think that was pretty good <laughs> Celeste is very good Uh too hard for me though yeah I had, a, I had a good time for the first probably two hours and now it's just fucking intense and i i just can't do yeah it. i've watched i literally can't that, i like... can't do it not not as a matter of like i'm not strong enough or i'm not you know i need to power up a bit i can't do the platforming mm-hmm. I, I can't uh and he goes honorable mentions to everybody's golf yeah metal gear solid five yeah and hellblade yeah obviously last of us is up there if you include the remasters as they were close but i don't uh, Lee, a new member of Popsy community, jumps in. He says, "Okay, talking about the PS4 personally, Spider-Man, God of War, Gravity Rush 2, uh, and I also really enjoyed Killzone: Shadowfall, and I absolutely love Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5. Bit, great, bit shady on that one, on that one there, Lee, because that's would technically fall into the PS3, and of course, Uncharted 4. He goes, now if other, if if we can put other consoles in the running too, not not not, not just exclusive to the PlayStation." Breath of the Wild, Life is Strange, yeah. Sunset Overdrive, yeah, Dead Cells, yeah, yeah. What if Dead Cells on that list? You don't love it that much? I, I really, really like it, but not as much as the other mm. ones I bought. Mario Kart Eight Deluxe, yeah, and Forza Horizon Four. He puts four on there. A lot of love for Forza. Mm. Forza is probably like the the one of the better car races. Like Forza Horizon Three, which was the one that was set all in Australia, best, was dope. Didn't Gran Turismo just flop? Yeah, Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo is super sim. Yeah. Where Forza Horizon has sim elements, but it's also not quite an arcade game. Mm. So it's this very nice middle ground. Um, 
Uh, Paul James, the one Paul James in the chat over there, hey. he says, Dis- uh, discarding remasters, so The Last of Us specifically, it's a two-horse race so far. That's why I didn't put The Last of Us in there. Yeah. Well. So you've got God of War and The Witcher 3. Mm-hmm. And if I had to choose, I'd be edging towards the latter of the two. So Witcher 3 is probably looking closer. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of others deserve to be in the conversation, which include Horizon, Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Doom, and potentially Red Dead 2. i Doom wasn't in yours, actually. I think I love the soundtrack of Doom more than I love the game. The game is great, yeah. but that soundtrack is the winner. Is yeah. the winner. Uh, my top ten for PlayStation Four from Jono. I'm not sure. I'm not sure of order of one to ten, so I'm just going to read them out. If you put God of War, The Witcher Three, Uncharted Four, Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona Five. Mm-hmm. Can you put Persona Five on your list? Because it's not as good as Four. It's not. No, it's it's not. fucking awesome. <laughs> it's not as good as oh, four, though. Dude, the, some of the girls that work, for some, I don't know what it is, they fucking love Persona. Period. No, like, you know, like these guys are great and all, but there, there must be something with 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 uh, having autism and loving fucking like JRPGs. Because oh, yeah. consistently across the board, they Persona all just four or love five? it. Um, oh, I was having okay. a chat with Courtney, who's one of one of the women. We're, we're having a big chat about five and four. Four. She's, she's mm-hmm. like enamored before. Where Lindsay loves five. See, five I can get because it's very stylish. Yeah. It's very like flashy and, you know. Um, but no, she, had, she, wanted, she wanted a big rant the other day. It was just lovely about how good Teddy is. Teddy's the best. <laughs> I love Teddy. <laughs> you would fit right in with these guys, man. Because like, when they start turning, like, because they're, they're like, for some reason, like, yeah, JRPGs just resonate with them something fierce. So they start going on these big things about JRPGs. I'm like, dude, you're the... R- oh, that's the- It's a big adventure with friends. That's yeah. what JRPGs are. Yeah. It's a big grand adventure with some best buds. Um, and John A put Detroit Become Human, Spooderman, Celeste, Metal Gear Solid Five, and Shovel Knight. Good man. Good man. Uh, Damo says, unless Red Dead blows it out of the water, I'd have to say the best game on PS4 so far is God of War. Great story, great characters, rewarding gameplay. All the runners up for sure are Spooderman and Uncharted 4. A lot of overlaps there, which is good, which means, you know, it's consistently well loved games. I still don't get Breath of the Wild. Yeah, me either. I still don't get it. Should all take Breath of the Wild out of that list mm. and fucking put Stardew Valley in there. Just. Oh, leave it. Hey, we got, we got frozen camera again. Just leave it blank. <laughs> if Breath of the Wild is going to be on there, just leave it blank. Yeah, just just redact it. It's not a Zelda game. It is not a Zelda game. Breath of the Wild is not a traditional Zelda game. And I know they like to evolve their formulas and all that, but it is an average oh. open world game with the Zelda skin on top of it. That's all that game is. Yeah, so the the actual open world is average. Like some of the physics in there are really cool. Like s- some of the bones are really nice, but there's like very minimal flesh on those bones. Uh, there's very cool stuff in the game. Like it is a good, it's a good game, but it is not to me a Legend of Zelda game. Yeah, it depends on what you come with Legend of Zelda for. Mm. Well, every other game ever made. So I think I, I think I know my stuff a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is in your wheelhouse. This well, is the only Zelda game I haven't finished. Ooh. Well, I'll give it except for a lot of the very, very old ones. Mm. Um, yeah, because it's not a Zelda game; it's an open world game with a Zelda skin. I'm gonna get that tattooed on my forehead. What do you think? <laughs> what is your favorite games of this generation? Chuck them in the comments below. Let us know. I'll be in there to to chat and tell you why you shouldn't put Breath of the Wild in there and why you should replace it with Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> but no, hey, jump in below and let us know what your what your lists are for good fun. But uh, those games have been, they've gone, they're done, they ain't coming back out again. So we're going to jump into the section we call Coming for the Players, which are a bunch of games that are coming to play your PlayStation this week. Now, once again, as we always, we should always clarify with a like, small disclaimer, this is normally for the US PlayStation Store. Sometimes it comes across, sometimes they don't. Mm. I'm waiting for the day where you slip up and say Coming on the Players. That's the episode I want to be in. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. which so we we just read the drop. Yeah, air missions hind PS4 digital. <laughs> there's too many. Said like, there's like twenty games. Oh fuck, games. okay. The cat and the coup, PS4 digital. Catastronauts PS4 digital. Creed Rise to Glory PS VR digital and retail. Oh, that's the that's the VR Creed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why it's called Creed VR. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Cryptract PS4 digital. Dakar 18 PS4 Retail, Dark Eclipse PSVR Digital, Deployment PS4 Digital, FIFA 19 PS4 Digital and Retail, Freaky Awesome PS4 Digital, Fuck Me 
The Grand Museum VR, PSVR Digital, Hollow Knight, Void Heart Edition, PS4 Digital. It's a good game. You'll buy it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the, the the difficulty comes from the Switch con- from the Switch controller. No. No. I finished Shovel Knight, which is gets pretty fucking hard. Yeah. I want to get the plat in that Shovel Knight, but there is one where it's like beat the game without dying once. Mm. And that's where I'm like, ooh. Give it a go. You probably like reload saves every time you do yeah. and stuff. But yeah. Jack and Jill DX, PS4, <laughs> PS Vita, digital. It's like Degeneration X. Got two words for you. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> 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 Life is Strange 2, Episode 1, PS4. Dude, I'll read it because I know a lot of people are excited. Long away to sequel to award-winning Life is Strange Returns. Two brothers, aged 16 and 9, are forced to run away from home after a tragic incident <clears throat> while attempting to conceal sudden and mysterious supernatural power. Now, I thought that this was a continuation of the girls' story. I didn't realise these were new oh, characters. me too. I had no idea. Because I tried... I think Episode 1 was free. Yeah. And I didn't like... I got stuck. I had to, like... Get some some girls were sitting in front of like the dorm, and I had to get them to move so I could get in, and I couldn't figure out how to <laughs> stop playing it at that point. I also have a juicy rumor for the end of this as well. Metal juicy Max, rumor. Metal Max Xeno, uh-huh. PS4 digital and retail. Perception remastered, PS4 digital. Pilot supports, PS4 wait, whoa, digital. Wait, 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 hang on, go back. Perception, that game came out like a year ago. How is that remastered? Uh, using, uh, I don't know. It doesn't mention anything about it. All right, fair enough. Pitter Pot, Pitter Pot, PS4 Digital, Punchline, PS4, PS Vita Digital, Revenant Dogma, PS4, PS Vita Digital, Think of the Children, Woo! Little Bobby's Dead, The Barbecue is on Fire, Jen's Eating Poisonous Berries and The Birthday Cake Still Needs Icing, Just Another Wonderful Day Out with the Kids in Think of the Children, A Frantic Parenting Simulator for Up to Four Now, days. I guarantee we've read this before on the drive. I think Maybe we have delayed. to. Must, yeah. Yeah, we did actually. But yeah, we're, we're I, I, I want to do that. I want to stream that bad boy, so we'll uh, make that happen. This is a police two PS4 digital and retail. Yes. Interpret the law as you see fit. Run the sheriff's department. Manage your cops. Make tough decisions, and try to keep out of prison yourself. In this story-driven mixture of adventure, strategy, and turn-based tactical combat. I did reach out for a code, but if one doesn't happen, I'm just going to buy it anyway because I want to stream that bad boy too. It's so much fun the first time. Time spinner PS4 PS Vita digital. Toon War, PS4, Digital, Valkyria Chronicles 4, PS4, Digital Retail. Uh, there's a few goodies in there. Yeah, a Think of, of the children, there. like, good uh, good party game. Not, not party game, like, multiplayer game. Yeah, specifically. Think of the children. Uh, this is a police. Uh, what else was there? A Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight. I'm sure people are excited for Life is Strange too. Uh, yeah. So, the rumour, according to my sources. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's your source? Oh, that's their anonymous. <laughs> 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 PS Plus games for next month are Neo and Diablo Reaper of Souls. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Mm. Did you buy all the Diablos yet? No, I haven't bought them. We're going to buy hold Diablo, out, we're gonna buy Diablo for, like, for work. Hold out for like a week. Yeah. You'll see. Neo, like you said, yeah, this, this has made the made Diablo the makes sense because BlizzCon is next month and they've been hiring people for the Diablo team and they have said there is a Diablo announcement this year so I think having Diablo free for the month of BlizzCon Guess uh, is a pretty smart move. Yeah. Uh, and Neo... Because Neo, Neo 2's yeah. in the works, yeah. comes out early next year. It's probably a good way to get people in mm-hmm. and... Uh, and we're, we we're, we're in a period now with like a lack of that Soulsborn genre. The Soulsborn, like the voice you gave it. I just hate the word. I hate the word. Yeah. But the, it's an apt way of describing yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, you can't um, explain it in other way. But yeah, I, I, rumors. They're rumors, but I'm I'm pretty confident. I like, are you also just the internet? Because I heard the same rumor. Yeah, Reddit. <laughs> 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 Someone found a, a, a leaked, a, a apparent leaked picture. Yeah. Yeah. But that, like, if it was every month there was leaks, then I'd be like, meh. But there never is. Yeah. So this time, I'm grain of salt, but it seems pretty reasonable. I'm down with it. And the pictures seem pretty legit, too. So, yeah. That makes sense. It does. Is that mine or yours? It's a private number. No call or ID. Uh, This PlayStation conversation happened on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Time on YouTube and 8 a.m. on iTunes and other podcast services. If you'd like to be a part of future conversations, please join us on Facebook. Join us on Discord. Comment below. If you're feeling generous, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash popculturists. Head over there, check out the tiers. There might be something there that interests you. And if you want to show the love of pop cultures on your body, head to popcultures.com slash shop. We can buy shirts like this and the one that's buried in there, I assume. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you do want to be a Patreon supporter, you can watch us record this live on Saturday morning with your own exclusive Patreon link. I feel like I just have to prove that I am. Yeah, he is now. 
And we are on Twitch at twitch.tv slash popculturist where you can uh, subscribe and follow and join us as we play this Think of the Children. Join us as we play uh, This is the Police. Uh, we did used to stream a lot more here on YouTube, but we found the YouTube's being a dick when it comes to game streams. Um, hence the lack of videos outside of uh, this. So, until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. And that was for the players. <laughs>